We invite all of you to stand in reverence of the word in First Peter chapter five verse six. First letter of Peter. First Peter 5, 6 Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time casting all your care upon him for he cares for you Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may God, may the God of all grace, who called us for his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Visit us through you with your word, O Lord. The church may be seated. Beloved, the word from Peter, when he talks about this advice, Peter has a ministry, and even before once he doubted about what God can do for him but in his heart there was a desire to serve the Lord when the prophecy was delivered that Jesus would die Peter he was about to defend and impeach as was something feasible so in the first moment he he didn't reach out for the purpose. And when he said, you are the Christ, and Jesus said to him, the Holy Spirit revealed that to you. And after that, he denied Christ. He betrayed him three times. But after the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus presented himself to him and asked him, do you love me? If you do, take care of my flock. And then he understood that he needs to humble himself to the, 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 the will of God. And the church as well, when they find out about the purpose, as we are in the month of dedication, we need to understand that we need to love Him more and more. We all know the Lord. We had once an experience and we want to give more of ourselves to the Lord. But how to do that? How to give more as the Lord is sovereign? And we understand that when we serve one another, the Bible says, if you want to be the biggest, the greatest, be the smallest. Jesus is the greatest, and he humbled himself and born among us and served us and served us. And sometimes as a church, we go through some situations, and the advice from the Holy Spirit is to humble ourselves. Even before the man kind, because when we do that, the Lord exalts us. He lifts us up. We don't trust in our strength. We trust in the, in, the tr in the strength of the Lord, because He is the one that can make the perfect righteousness. 
So when you trust the Lord, you don't need to go after defending yourself, but we use the spiritual weapons, and the Lord rescues us in our trials. So when we rescue one another in prayer and assistance, we see the mercy of the Lord. Sometimes there's one sick, sometimes there's another one going through another struggle, a children, an adolescent, teenage, a youth. So the Lord come to rescue us. When we pray, we fast, we do the early dawn, and when we understand what comes from the Lord, when someone asks for a visit or assistance, I need that the Lord speak with me. We put ourselves in the front of the battle, and the Lord takes care of their soul and help our, our soul, our own soul. And the Bible says the one that water the plant is watered too. And the Lord never forsake the ones that trust Him. Sometimes we think, how can I do that? I don't have, in myself, I don't see the resources for that. I'm feeling the worst, the worst servant to pray for someone. But at this time, that the Lord feel that we are submitting to His mighty power and He uses us. And He uses us with power. And sometimes we say things that we need to listen to from the Lord, but the Lord uses us. And we receive blessings as well. And bless the ones that we pray for. We are vehicles of blessings. When someone go for a meal, the, that person grabs the forks and knives, and doesn't matter if it's a metal, if it's gold or silver or plastic, but the, the, the food needs to be brought to the mouth. So it doesn't matter who God uses to feed us. Sometimes the Lord uses a lady, pastor, children, a praise, a song, but the Lord always rescues us. When we submit ourselves, He, he rescues us. Then we feel the relief. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Nobody can do anything with their own endeavors. As the word says in Acts of Apostles, the, action, the actions that they made, guided by the Holy Spirit, the desire to see the power of God, many, many miracles happened. And Jesus says, after your departure, even greater miracles will happen. We believe in that. That's why we're here. The greatest miracle that could happen in our lives was salvation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Casting all of the care upon Him, for He cares for you. Sometimes we're so anxious, so desperate, that we forget that the Lord is taking care. We feel forsaken, like a fruit. I remember a youth that was very anxious to get married and he was looking for someone to assist him and he want to approach to a lady to a youth and everything goes bad and the Lord gave a gift when someone was praying for him and they saw him underneath a tree and he was in the right place and there was a fruit right upon your head and this fruit will get ready to to be written and you're gonna collect you're gonna harvest even without any effort in the right time so that gift was talking about his marital life or sentimental life so every time he tried to do by his own endeavors so professionally and academically he was doing okay Other uh, girls who approach, but at the right moment, the anxiousness w was gone. So the the lady that the Lord has prepared for him approached. He understood. He identified. So the fruit came to his hands, made by the Lord, the provision. So he he could rejoice in the Lord in his sentimental life because he cast all his cares upon the Lord. 
So the Lord took care of that youth as He's taking care of all of us. Be sober and watch because the enemy is walking around, roaring like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. But the angels of the Lord are protect, protecting us. We have to watch. We cannot triple down because at the minimum moment of weakness, we might be fragile. But we need to be connected to the body. If we in the body, we be protected. The Lord will give a gift and we humble ourselves as the first word mentioned. When you use the, the means of grace, the prayer, and no matter what, the Lord has all the resources to rescue us, to protect us. And we'll be delivered from all the attacks. That's why Jesus says, watch unceasingly. This week, for example, the church prayed 24 hours ininterruptedly. The world is going through suffering, but the Lord is good and He is, is marvelous. Resist steadfast in the faith, because after sufferings, we will experience the Word of God. The work of the Holy Spirit will be perfecting. He will confirm our blessing and our salvation for His glory, fortifying us, strengthening us, to make us strong. To Him be glory and dominion forever. Amen. After the, that cycle, after God gives us the victory, we feel gratitude to the Lord, the praises to the Lord. And the praise sometimes come before even we find the blessing. Did you notice that? Sometimes we feel gratitude even before we see the victory because our God, He shed His blood on the cross and we don't trust ourselves. We trust in Him, he, the one that made the, the earth and the heavens and has all the powers upon everything. To Him be glory and gratitude for even though we have uh, trials and struggles, but in that moment that we receive the perfectioning from the Lord, He want to test us to see if we define to serve Him and to inherit the salvation. I remember the friends of Daniel in the furnace. They say, O oh, King, if the Lord wants, He will deliver us. If not, we will die, but we will continue serving Him. And sometimes the deliverance comes within the trial. So when they were put inside the furnace, they, uh, everybody saw that the Lord was with them. And the Lord will protect the church the same way, our families. Everything we do, our professional life, anything that involves us. We are in the arms of the Lord. We are not lost. We have a body that we belong. We have a flock where the Lord is delivering us. Sometimes we come full of doubts, but the Lord delivers us. He fills us with faith, overflowing, and we can feel His presence, and we understand that we are not better than anyone, but we have a shelter, a place that we can humble ourselves and see the Lord being exalted. The exaltation of the Lord is not for us to be in evidence or to be upon it, every anybody. But the Lord has called us for for head, not for for the for the end. Wherever we go, in the in the church, in the school, in our jobs, the Lord has called us to be conquerors. A lot of people has their habits and we have the word of God. They instruct us. The guide us and the Lord has the best for us and when we we reach that out the benefit is for us for family for friends and the, and the Lord want to use us with his grace and power so we can we all can always have a word from heaven for the ones that are surrounding us so we can be light in the darkness and 
before his light there is no darkness that can sustain because the light of Christ dissipates all the darkness and we have the Lord by our side every day all the time sometimes we get even embarrassed when we decide to ask for prayer but don't do that ask when you need amen you think I'm fast Our gratitude, O Lord, our praise for your angels. We sing with them. What can we give to you, O Lord, for all the things that you have done for us? Glory today and forever. At your feet we will exalt you. The Lord is Righteous and faithful. His mercy are endless. All his works, O Lord, who praise you, and your saints who bless you. Glory, the heavens manifest your glory and power. The angels praise you non stop. Glory in our lips, always glory. We will have a praise, always have a praise of exaltation for your glory, O oh Lord. In our lips will be always a praise of exaltation for your glory, O Lord. Forever to you, glory. To your name we exalt. To your name exalt.
He said, there's someone picking on me. Every time I go to the pulpit, either the mic is not working or the battery is gone. <laughs> the Lord he gave some gifts. The Lord showed a woman come tonight. She's been feeling that the Holy Spirit is talking to her. She noticed that she could be with a knowledge even bigger about the things of the Lord. She noticed that she's behind spiritually. She's, she has self-conscious about that. The Holy Spirit recently has taken us to understand and to grow <laughs> the doctrine. So if you're feeling that the Holy Spirit is requesting you to grow, that you need to read more the Bible, to participate more in the activities, because it is, it is in this environment that the Lord is, in, is using us. As the Lord will use you, you notice that your mentality, your understanding about the mysteries of the Lord will expand, will be perfectioned. The Lord shown as well about what is His project, the eternal project from God for the church. The church this year we are celebrating 50 years of the uh, 500 years of the Protest, uh, Protestant reform made by Martin Luther. So the growth of the church will go. Nobody can hold the church. By the history, we understand that the proje project of salvation is, is unstoppable. Several people try to impeach, try to stop, but nobody could stop the word of God to reach us. So we are celebrating 500 years of the reform and 50 years anniversary of the, the Maranatha Church, the, the project of the Holy Spirit among us as a church. So the Lord has brought to us this great project, the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not a religion, it's not a costume, it's not a, a Brazilian way to understand the Word of God. No, no. It's the work of the Holy Spirit that one day came to us and we feel the privilege and we glorify the name for this privilege. It's with joy that we glorify His name for the work of the Holy Spirit is being a lifestyle. So whoever is making this, their lifestyle is receiving great blessings from the Lord and I would like to use this moment to alert the church the fathers the parents especially the 31st of this month is the Halloween be careful take all the precautions it's a cultural feast in which sometimes our children will be involved even without noticing. You go to a school, to a store, to work. People celebrating this malignant feast. Be very careful. Be careful with the, the schedule of your kids, all the activities. If if you need, hold them at home that day. It's even better for them to not go to school that day than going and coming back with an oppression, with a, something from, from this world or the enemy. And some people have a tendency to, to think it's nothing abnormal. But this is something that the devil established to confront the project of God and to mock all the, the plan of God for salvation. This feast is like a celebration of the death. And our Savior has taught us about life in abundance. 
It's the opposite of what the enemy wants. We cannot confirm ourselves with that. We cannot blend with these things. We live in a moment of definition. Either you are or you're not. You cannot be with one feet in a church and one in the world. Especially something very explicit like the Halloween. I'm going to ask you to open the Bible in Mark 12, 27. Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, 27. I want you to understand how serious these things are. The devil used something simple, just chocolate, just a candy, but it's a malignant uh, strategy from, from the devil. Celebrating death. This is not our life. We celebrate life. We want to live in Jesus. We don't want to stay in this world. We're crying, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, to live eternally with Him. So, the Gospel of Mark 12, 27 says, He is not a God of death, a dead, but God of the living. And you are, therefore, greatly mistaken. So this talks about the ones that are not attempted to the project of God. We don't belong to that. We are the church of God. We're the faithful church. So this word, this, this advice is for the parents, for our families. Let's preserve our, our children, our families. Any involvement with this malignant feast, even though it, it presents as a cultural thing, be careful. Let's stand and let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. We praise you for we have sufficient information to express our gratitude for your love. With all hearts, we want to show you how grateful we are, our praises. We are happy with what you have done among the church for your endless love for your care that is very special for your holy presence in this place for every time we enter in your, in your house we can feel your, the touch of your Holy Spirit we can hear your sweet voice talking to our hearts so thank you Lord for all the things that you have done for us, for your great love, for everything you have done in our lives, for things that you will do, even more for the ones that is looking for us, for you, O oh Lord. That's how we praise you in Jesus' name. The grace, the marvelous grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon the church now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. If someone is in need for a prayer, for assistance, we are here to assist you. And we like to remind you about our 10.30 a.m. Bible study, Sunday school teaching. So if you want to know God better, if you want to know the world of God, come tomorrow. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Amen.